years for Athens to get a mosque. Finally, the city has lost its title, the last EU capital to not have an official place of worship for Muslims. The first Friday prayers in the first official Athens mosque. Only 13 people were allowed in because of coronavirus restrictions, but it was still an event of massive significance. The Athens mosque is being supervised by the Greek state. It has a capacity for 350 people, but has neither a minaret nor a dome. Prior to its opening, the more than 300,000 Muslims living in Athens had a difficult time finding a place to worship. They had to use makeshift prayer halls or masjids that were mainly in basements, warehouses and garages. Nine out of ten prayer halls in Athens are unlicensed and they could also face closure any time. So why did it take so long for Athens to get a mosque? To answer that, we have to go way back to the time when Greece was part of the Ottoman Empire. For centuries, there were many mosques and churches standing side by side all throughout Athens. But as the Greeks began their war of independence in the 1820s, a wave of destruction fell upon the city. Any semblance of Ottoman architecture, including mosques, were targeted and destroyed. Dini bir husumetle... Not a single mosque of ours still stands in Athens. They were all razed to the ground. But we did not resort to such ways in a city like Istanbul. Throughout the 20th century, attempts were made to build a mosque, but they failed. The recent journey for the Athens mosque hasn't been easy either. In 2006, the Greek government greenlit the project, giving it a $1 million budget. That created an uproar across the country where tensions between Muslims and Orthodox Christians still run deep. Bureaucratic hurdles, protests by far-right groups, and legal challenges all delayed the mosque's completion. But it was opposition from the Greek Orthodox Church that posed a major hurdle. Mired in such controversy, no construction company wanted to take up the project. In 2006, city officials proposed building an official mosque on an old military base. Even during the economic downturn, when jobs were needed, not a single construction firm wanted to build it. But the mosque finally opened and came just weeks after a Greek court convicted the neo-Nazi Golden Dawn Party of being a criminal organization. The group was one of the leading voices against the Athens mosque. Among the crimes they were convicted of include murder, an attempted murder. This is the terrifying modern face of fascism. A warning siren to the world from the streets of Athens. Over the past two decades, Muslims have had a hard time in Athens. Many who live in the city came as economic migrants. Right when Greece was being hit by the 2008 financial crisis, Muslim prayer halls were frequent targets for hate crimes. Those here say they've been attacked by the neo-fascist Golden Dawn Party. Today, the attacks haven't stopped. Instead, they've been directed at new groups. The Pakistani migrant worker was walking home along this path one evening when the four men jumped him. We won't give away our sacred land to non-Christians, to illegal migrants. Marches expressed fury at the number of migrants remaining in Greece since the closure of the Balkan route into Europe. The Athens-based Racist Violence Recording Network says that Greece saw a 14% increase in racist violence in 2018 from the previous year. And according to Effie Focus, a senior research fellow at the Hellenic Foundation for European and Foreign Policy, Greece ranks first at the European Court of Human Rights when it comes to violations of religious freedoms. The violations have often targeted the 150,000 strong Turkish minority in Greece's Western Thrace. Their rights are supposed to be protected under the 1923 Treaty of Lausanne which followed the First World War. Attempts to build a mosque in Athens span more than a century. 
way before the debate began on Muslim integration into Europe or the rise of the far right. And despite the hurdles and waiting nearly 200 years, Muslims in the Greek capital finally have an official place to pray. What does the future hold for Myanmar's Rohingya Muslim minority? The country's de facto leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, recently saw her party win big in parliamentary elections. But there was a catch. More than a million people were denied the right to vote. The very people who had the most to lose. <laughs> Others fled torture, sexual violence and random killings by the army and their Rakhine neighbors as their villages were set alight. The fact-finding mission and myself, we've, also, we've concluded that there is the intent for genocide. Do you ever worry that you will be remembered as the champion of human rights, the Nobel laureate, who failed to stand up to ethnic cleansing in her own country? No, because I don't think there's ethnic cleansing going on. That's all for this episode. Let us know if there are any stories out there that you feel need to be double-checked. You can write to me directly